Hi, and welcome to Jamie DeRoy and Friends. This week, we go back in our archives and bring you some of the comedians that we've had over the years. I was, I just, I flew back from San Francisco last night, and I was, so I fly at, and the San Francisco airport, I don't know if you know this, has that new body scanner thing, you know what I'm talking about, where you walk through, they can see your clit and everything. Anyway, so I walk through, I'm not kidding, I walk through, I get to the other side, the TSA agent says to me, thank you very much, sir. I'm like, what? Aren't they supposed to keep that stuff secret? Seriously, I was really pissed. Oh, what else? Oh, I had a total knee replacement in July. Mm -hmm. Anyone have the total knee? You did? You had one? And? Savage. This is what I loved about it. First of all, I turned into my mother because, you know, you're, you're homebound, you know? You can't do anything. Like, my activity was literally getting the mail. I sounded exactly like my mother. She'd call, I, so uh, today I, w I went downstairs, I, I got the mail, and then I brought it upstairs, and uh, I opened it, and I got a couple of phone calls, and... I ate a tuna sandwich, and it, I mean, literally, that was all. And then I would walk around the block, right? That was the big exercise, walking around the block. And it was July, so I had shorts on. Everyone would stop me, everyone. Oh, wow, what happened to your knee? You got a torn ACL, a meniscus tear, what's going on? And I'm like, no, I had a total knee replacement. Oh, really, wow. My great-grandfather just had that done. <laughs> Really good, I really feel good about myself. So, um, I just turned 50 last month, too. I think you have known me for almost like 30 years now. Isn't that, I know, I'm old, 50. Is, is 50 old? No. Oh, I'm at the Jamie DeRoy show, of course it's not old. All right, but, but let me tell you, if I was at Gotham, I'd be like, you know, hey, Grandma, but, um, no, 50, yeah. But they say you're middle-aged when you're 50. First of all, I'm not gonna live to 100, so that's totally not. The only reason I know I'm, I feel kind of middle-agey is number one, Eileen Fisher. And... <laughs> number two, if you tell anyone this, because I have not told anyone this at all, you're like the only people I'm telling. But the other day, I went to Chico's. Okay, I didn't buy anything. I didn't buy anything. Calm down. I got a tank top. Let me tell you something. Have you ever walked by Chico's? I mean, the mannequins have wrinkles and saggy breasts and osteoporosis. I'm not kidding. Some of their stuff is nice, too. And then I'll go online. Like, they always send you emails. Once you buy something there, they send you all the emails, like 50%. And then I'll be like, oh, my God, that blouse is really nice. And then I look it up, you know? And it has comments. And it's like, oh, I love this blouse. It fits great. Evelyn, 97. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think I'll wait on that one. But um, anyone in their 20s? Do we have any people in their 20s here? Do we? Oh, my God, how old are you? 29. Oh, you're 29. How old are you? You're not 22. You were born in 1990. And you're potty trained and you can walk and read. Let me tell you a couple things. 22. It goes by like that, by the way. Does it not? Doesn't it? And, and there's a very subtle difference between being in your 20s or your 40s and 50s. And you know what it is? I'm not kidding. It's the way you introduce your friends to each other. Because I remember in my 20s, I'd introduce my friends. I'd be like, oh, my God, you have to meet my friend Bill. He's amazing. He just ran the marathon. He's really into jazz. He just passed the bar. He has a wine cellar. You know, now I'm 50. This is how I introduce my friends to each other. Okay, so tonight you're going to meet my friend Carol. She is amazing. But... They just found a tumor behind her right eye. It's nothing. It is completely benign. They're taking it out next week. Look at the left eye, because the right eye's like going all over the place. She might slur her speech or fall down, but she's like an amazing poet, and she volunteers at God's Love We Deliver. I'm telling you, she's amazing. It's just unbelievable. Like, you get into your 40s, and all people discuss are their medical ailments. That's it. 
I'm not kidding. And everyone has a tumor. It's like every week I get a phone call, they found something, and it's always the size of a fruit. Have you noticed that? <laughs> they found the size of a grape, it's the size of a lemon, it's the size of Richard Simmons. Let me tell you something. In our generation, I think tumors should come in tall, grande, and vente. So, uh, I did want to ask you guys a question uh, right at the beginning. How broke do I look? <laughs> no, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. I didn't think so either. But I asked that because I was waiting for the train on my way here with two other people. And a guy came up to ask for change, and he skipped me. And I was offended. <laughs> like, at least let me say no. You know? Actually, I just got back from Minnesota. I got to see the Mall of America. Any guys see that? It was cool. It was beautiful, right? It's amazing. I was from Minnesota? It's very cool. OK, you've heard of it, evidently. It's good. Well, no, because I was exploring, and I went up, and my, my friend, she was like, oh, be careful. Don't go up on the fourth floor. I'm like, what's up on the fourth floor? She's like, oh, it's a lot of bars and clubs. It can get kind of rough up there. How big is your mall when it has a bad neighborhood in it? <laughs> and how nice is your city when the ghetto is inside the mall? <laughs> You've made it at that point. It's good to be back here, although the, the weather is actually colder here than it was in Minnesota. I've always hated the wintertime because I grew up with cheap parents. You know, my parents would do stuff like in the wintertime, heat was for guests. <laughs> so I'm inviting people over just because it's cold in the house. Do you know how hard it is to play Nintendo with mittens on? You can't get to the next level. It's embarrassing. My company comes over. I'm sitting there in my winter coat, my hat, my scarf. My mind is ridiculous. Why don't you just turn the heat on? It's like, that's how you get your money's worth. I didn't pay all that money for that coat just for you to wear it outside. <laughs> when I said you was going to wear it all winter, I meant all winter. <laughs> And my mother grew up on a farm, so as soon as we complained, y'all don't know how good y'all got it. When we was growing up, we didn't even have toilet paper. Grandma just told us to walk it off. <laughs> yeah, we did not have hand-me-downs in my family. I just actually moved from uh, Connecticut uh, about a month ago. I lived there for two years. Uh, so I feel at home here, because it's just, uh, about as diverse as Connecticut was. Uh, <laughs> Good. Seeing another brother in Connecticut is like two Highlanders seeing each other. <laughs> there can only be one. It's true. Actually, the most racist people I've ever met are my own family. Right? I got into a fight with my mom last Thanksgiving. I said, ever since I was in the eighth grade, you have hated Latinos. Like, that's bullshit. I've always hated Latinos. <laughs> And she didn't like my girlfriend now because she said she's too light-skinned. Funny to her, evidently. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, she is pretty light-skinned because her mother is white and her father is white. I remember showing my grandmother a picture of my girl. You buy a wallet, you supposed to take the white people out first. <laughs> no, Grandma, that's my girlfriend. How did they get you in the picture with the white girl? <laughs> no, that's illegal. Don't feel bad for my girlfriend, though, because her parents don't like me either. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They didn't ever approve the relationship. And they were actually really cool at first, and they became distant over time. You know? So clearly, they hated me as a person. <laughs> mm. 
You got to respect that, right? I feel like Martin Luther King would have been proud of her parents. Because they didn't hate me because of the color of my skin, but the horrible content of my character. <laughs> that was the dream. That's it. No, we're good together. I know she was the one for me when I saw her beautiful tan lines when we first met. I love tan lines. It's like, kind of like God came down and highlighted everything that was important. I knew I liked the piano player. I really do. No, I gotta lose. I, I'm trying every day. I gotta lose weight. My doctor told me, he said, Jeff, you gotta learn how to eat. I said, you stupid bastard, I know how to eat. He told me the secret to losing weight was don't eat nothing past nine o'clock at night. So you know what I did? I set all my clocks back four hours. And guys can't lose weight because everything's for the girls. They got the buns of steel, the thigh master. I tried that once, I almost cracked my balls like walnuts. I was squeezing the thing, it popped it like a paper clip right through the picture window. I get into drugs, I tried taking speed to lose weight, but now I eat faster. I used to play racquetball twice a week, but now I can't fit to the little door anymore. Laura in, he's got 20 more minutes to fat pass. I was on that slim fast diet for three weeks. I went to the bathroom, little puffs of dust came out. I had to use a feather duster when I was finished. Sometimes the puffs of smoke were so big, Indians were calling me. And it's, I, I try everything, it's so, it's so hard to lose weight. No, let me ask you this, is there fat people on the beach in the summer? Is there? No, oh, I don't go. Would you get mad if I went on the beach? No. You wouldn't get mad? I don't go. I got too big. I don't. I, I don't even go to the pools at the hotels anymore. I was in Memphis, Tennessee last November. I had just checked in this hotel, right? Nobody by the pool. I go, maybe I'll sneak down. I, I get my chair, my blanket, big box of Twinkies. Going to lay out for a little bit. <laughs> I'm there two minutes. Here comes a lady with her kid. The kid's screaming. Mommy, mommy, look how fat the guy is. I was so embarrassed. I got my chair, my blanket, I pick up all the wrappers. <laughs> and there's the mother slapping the kid. Stop it, she said, stop it. Maybe it runs in his family. And the little kid was fighting her going, ooh, nobody runs in his family. <laughs> so I ate the little bastard, I ate him. <laughs> so I'm staying at a hotel in Jersey, right? I'm taking a shower. Guess who was in the shower at this hotel? Who? Who? <laughs> I like this guy. Who was in the shower? What's in the shower in these hotels? So what kind of soap? Liquid. Li lady, you're rubbing too fast. Soap. How big was the soap? A little far. This big. It was this big. I was in a hurry. It looks like I was taking a shower with a chiclet like this. <laughs> what the heck? Fat people don't shower. I hate them, so I need to get more, so I need more soap, right? So I go to the front desk of this hotel, Now I don't mean no disrespect, but these people are buying everything. I go, sir, I'm in a hurry, can I get some more soap? He starts freaking out at me. What do you know you do that bastard? What about his open room? I said, buddy, please give me a bar, I'm in a hurry. What do you know, my friend? One by, I go, listen, you prick, I need more soap. And you know what? I need another towel, and I yank the towel right off his head. And when I pulled it, little bars of soap go falling all over the floor. <laughs> so today's my anniversary. I came up tonight and my aunt, my wife is pissed, Jamie. She says, you better be banging her. That's what she told me. I'm what I got. <laughs> 24 years ago. No, guess where I went on my honeymoon? Guess where I went? Pocono Mountains. In Clap if you've been to the Pocono Mountains. You ever been there? Clap. <laughs> Losers. Losers. <laughs> It was that, what a night we had. We had the honeymoon suite we had. Oh my God. The heart shaped water bed. Mirrors on the ceiling. I'll never forget the look in her face. What a blushing bride she was as she carried me over the threshold. And she was so cute, she called out from the bedroom. She goes, Honey, unpack my things. And there it was the little skimpy red lace negligee. I had a little trouble getting it on, but it was beautiful. <laughs> When I came out, she was laying naked on the water bed. The urge came over me, I jumped on, she flipped across the room. We had to wait till the tide came in to make love. She started to get me in the mood, she started whispering recipes in my ear. 
two cups of sugar. I love you, fat bastard. <laughs> hey, know what they had there? Big round bed. Big round bed. It was the first bed I ever fit on perfectly. <laughs> but you know what happened? I couldn't get off the bed. There's no corners on the round bed. Two hours, I was stuck on this freaking bed. I finally popped a Woody and pole vaulted off the side. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Are you enjoying your summer so far? Yeah. Yeah? Reminiscing about the vacations you took when you were a child? That's what I do, you know. My God, we go on vacation every year. We had a 1959 Ford Country Squire station wagon, wood paneling along the sides. The seats were always down on the back. It was like a big playroom back there, you know? There were no child restraint seats or safety belts back then. Just five kids in zero gravity. Slow down, Daddy, slow down, shut up! He could hit us all the way in the back of the car. That's how long his arm was. I don't know if you remember this or not, but back then you were allowed to drink and drive. Mike, you know, cops would be going by, my dad would be toasting them with a beer. I got five kids in the back. My God, and the kids today, they have the DVDs in the car. Daddy, I want to watch a DVD. I want a DVD! We didn't have DVDs when we were kids. We had BVDs. My father would throw back his dirty BVDs. No, that, did, that didn't happen. I just made that up. But we had horror movies. That's what we had. My father's eyeballs in the rearview mirror. I'm coming back there. I'm killing every one of you goddamn kids. This is my vacation. And he could hit us all the way back. And if he couldn't hit us because he was having a short arm day, he'd jam on the brakes and we'd always slide forward. <laughs> then he'd hit us with a hammer or a tire iron or something. My mother going, don't be telling audiences your father hit you with a hammer or a tire iron. If he did, it was probably because you were acting like a crazy person back there. God, you're like a mental case. <laughs> my mother would point to people. That was her job, you know? We'd be driving down the street. My mother would be pointing to weird looking people. Hey, kids. <laughs> look at that one over there. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Go ahead, take a good goddamn good look at that one. Look at the size of the head on that man. Then the guy would look at us and my father would go, what are you looking at? We're looking at you, you don't look at us. Go ahead, kids, look at him, 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 look at him. My mother would tell me when I was a kid to get the puss off my face. You ever hear that one? Get that puss off your face. You're not walking around this house with the big puss on. I had no idea what she was talking about. I'd be on my way to school. You're not going to school with that puss on your face. I'd go to school and ask my teacher, Sister Damien, do I have a big puss on my face? Get to the principal's office. But my mother said I had a puss on my face. Where's the puss? I want to know where it is. Talking about the puss. You have to repeat everything you goddamn hear at school. You're like a booty man. I'll tell you one thing, mister. You're not going to summer camp this year. No way, Jose. Then my mother would call me Jose. <laughs> then my brothers would go, you're adopted. <laughs> That's why she calls you Jose. You Mexican, no, I'm not. Que pasa? <laughs> what are you saying to me? <laughs> I guess you wouldn't be surprised if I told you I was divorced. <laughs> Oh boy, there are, there are a lot of issues why we got divorced, you know. Uh, being gay, that's a good reason to get divorced. God, how do you tell your wife you're gay? Honey, I'm homo! <laughs> From a very Irish Catholic family, so my mother was telling me that I had to go to the priest to confess and go to confession and do that whole thing. I'm 50, you know, and I had to go to confession now, you know, and I went to the priest and told him I was gay, and now we're dating, so it really worked out. <laughs> they always wanted me to be a singer when I was a kid. They, they told me I looked like Wayne Newton when I was growing up. Is that child abuse? 
Can I sue them now and get the house? You know, you look just like that Wayne Newton. I don't look anything like Wayne Newton. You do too. Get up to your room and learn the words to Donka Shane. And daddy, don't you walk so fast. Hey, the Wayne Newton lunchbox with the microphone in it. I never went to camp, I went to Vegas. My mother would come in my room late at night, paint a thin mustache to buff my head. But I met all the greats out in Vegas, you know, Sinatra and, you know, he was great. Uh, you know, the one song I was thinking that he never recorded was that We Are The World song. <laughs> we are that world. We know them kids. We're on that crazy spinning sphere we call the earth. Maybe not for this crowd. That song just don't swing. Ding, 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 ding. They just re-recorded that song. Did you know that? They did with the Beeb and uh, I guess the Jonas Brothers and everybody. And uh, do you like the old one or the new one? Oh. Yeah, everybody likes the old one. Do you have the old one back there, Kay? <laughs> Love 